that, we'll move to Ross. Where'd you go? There you are. You're moving on the picture, on the frame. All right. Shelly. Shelly's here. Uh, happy Bucks. Anybody happy today? Anyone? Happy Bucks? Anyone? 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 John? Yeah, I'm happy. I got uh, my first two ski patrol shifts on out at Afton. The snow was great. Uh, the lift lines are long because they're uh, they've only got limited train open, but it's uh, it's been pretty nice to get out with the nice weather and, and enjoy the nice snow. Isaac, yeah, I want to follow up with uh, Sean's comments about seeing snow uh, with a, with a happy dollar. <laughs> Zach, thumbs down for Zach. Uh, with a happy dollar, because here we are in a, we're almost mid-December, and my wife and I are still doing yard work out front. So, loving the great weather. Anybody else? Back? Uh, I've got a few happy bucks. So I, I missed you guys last week. I was in Wisconsin Dells for a seminar, and no, I didn't get wet. Uh, three hour seminar, six hours of driving, but it was worth it. Uh, uh, part of our state chiropractic organization and we're planning some seminars uh, for 2021. Hopefully we can all get together again. Um, another happy buck, my daughter Addie, my youngest is uh, currently in a play at the Phipps. If you have uh, littles or grandkids or Maybe you just want to be a kid again. You can go uh, to the Phipps and enjoy a live production of Cinder Alpha, which is just as it sounds, a mashup of Cinderella and uh, Elf. Uh, it's made for little kids, so it's a, it's a lighthearted comedy, but it's good. It's good, and uh, the Phipps has done a great job of uh, socially distancing the seats. It's a theater in the round. Um, atmosphere. Kids have to wear masks on stage, but they really did a great job. Uh, half of the uh, half of the cast is is a is a is a critter of some kind, a a mouse or a bird. So their masks are bird beaks or or mouse whiskers, and so they they did a great job. Uh, or, or Isaac. Or or Isaac is a critter. Is that what you're saying? I don't know what to say with that, Randy. Don't know what to say. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, this is nice. It's nice to see something relatively, uh, relatively normal. And I guess you know, that's another thing I, I'm happy for. Uh, looks like state numbers are, are dropping a little bit. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths are trending down right now. I hope that, I hope that continues. Maybe we can just keep the Minnesotans in Minnesota, and life will be good. Touchy subject, Zach. I know, I know. Zach, that is not building goodwill and better friendships. Any other happy bucks? Any announcements today, Mr. President? I do not have any that I'm well aware of, but except for the reminder of the online link for the bell ringing, if you have not taken a look at that, volunteer. That would be the only one. Mary Meals, do you have an update on that? Isaac? Uh, yes, we are over 50 families so far. Greetings. So yeah, there's still uh, there's still plenty of room. If you happen to know of any organizations that uh, work with families who might be in need this holiday season, uh, just send them to our HudsonRotaryClub.org website and the links to sign up are under the Merry Meals blurb there on our page. So Again, uh, we're at 50 family, 50-ish 50 families currently so far. And uh, for those of you not in Rotary who are on the call today, uh, Merry Meals is an annual service project that we do th through our club where uh, traditionally we have provided the ingredients for a traditional holiday meal. Obviously with the public health and safety concerns this year, we're not doing all of that that we've done in uh, past years, but we are still sending out uh, all the gift cards to those families who have signed up. So we're still doing it. It looks a little different this year, uh, but it's still just as important. So again, if you work with any organizations or, or churches, nonprofits, et cetera, that have families uh, in their group that might be in need this holiday season, just point them to our club website and those families can sign up there. 
Just a quick note on that, Isaac. Did did Joni send out that first giving link to everybody? I never. Did she? Did you guys see that? Yes, Joni did. Uh, Joni did send out that link, and that link is also on our club website for those who want to donate. And I believe as of yesterday, we had already had two donations. Okay, I just want to make sure that we should probably send that to the club and have them put it on their Facebook pages or whatever. Can oh, yeah. So I'm going there too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the other announcement is that this next week, Thursday, is our uh, annual holiday meeting, which is going to be virtual at 5 p.m. Joel or Shelly, if you wanted to interject anything on that, uh, we look forward to everybody joining us for kind of a fun and game kind of. Virtual. Yeah, I can put something in on that. So um, I spoke with Carrie Heisler up at the school and she is um, talking, it's, you know, it's a little delayed trying to get through there. So today she's going to gather a group of swing choir people. So it may be one, it may be 10. I don't know who is going to be on board for this for swing choir people, and then they're gonna meet at the Hudson High School, sing choir live to us through Zoom. And the, I told her the kind of timeline that we're looking at is that we would start with the pledge and four-way test, and then we would open up with the swing choir for about 15, 20 minutes. And there's an opportunity because it's live to be able to do requests like we've done in the past. And then the second half of the meeting Joel is kind of taken care of and he's running some fun games. Best dressed attire, he thought a first, second, and third place is where he was going. If we're doing a five o'clock meeting, he thought that would give people time to, you know, they could wear their attire to work and be festive all day, right, Randy? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why I gotta ask if we're not we're not recording this. Otherwise, then I just, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to record it and hold it against you forever. No, I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, we got to adhere to the four way test on this, right? We're all trusting each other. So um, I think it'll just be fun and it'll be a nice, lighthearted meeting. And I'm pretty excited that I was able to track down Carrie and get her to actually commit to something. So um, I gave her your name, Isaac, in case she has any questions on technology, which I couldn't answer. So she may reach out to you, but she said she's pretty familiar with Zoom and she can operate it straight from her office. So, okay. Excellent. Thank you, Shelly and Joel for that. Any other announcements? Rotary Minute, Isaac, are we, yes or no? No? All right, I guess we'll turn it over to Sean. Thank you, Ross. Uh, again, welcome students of the month. It's uh, it's nice to honor you. Uh, we're excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, we've got Zoe Field and Adrian Weaver. Uh, the parents are with us today. Uh, Zoe, as we talked about uh, before the meeting started, uh, why don't you uh, kick it off and tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so as you all know, I'm Zoe Field, and this is my dad, um, Tom Field, right here. So I guess going off of this personal biography, biography form that I have, um, as far as what to talk about, <laughs> I have three younger sisters. Two of them are juniors, and they're 16. And then the youngest is Miriam, and she's, um, she's in seventh grade. She's 13. And sorry, the twins are uh, Mano and Celia. Um, as far as high school involvement goes, um, I have been in cross country and that's been one of the most, I think, encouraging things that I've been part of also one of the hardest, but just a really good community of girls and great coaches. I really appreciated that. Um, I am in the choir at Hudson high school, not with Mrs. Heisler, but with Mr. Hayes, um, chamber choir and. I, so I enjoy music, just generally speaking. I also play piano, and that's been since um, the beginning of elementary school, about second grade. Uh, outside of school, I my family has had several opportunities to travel um, overseas. My mom is in Switzerland, so we like to try to visit her side of the family. Um, every couple years, it's been hard 
you know, this summer we were going to go, but we weren't able to because of COVID. So, um, and then uh, the summer after my junior year, I went to Bangkok, Thailand to teach English at, um, at an English school with some people from church. And I was there for a month. And then freshman year, um, I was able to travel to Niger in Africa with my family for two months, um, living on a hospital compound. Um, well, my dad, he's a doctor, so he was working. And the rest of us were kind of exploring and doing some school at the same time as well. Um, more, more locally, I guess, I've been part of a girls discipleship group, girls Bible study called Bright Lights. And um, I was an attendee for maybe five years-ish um, since fourth grade. And then um, eighth through 11th grade, I was a leader with a friend of mine. So that's been something um, encouraging for, for me to be a part of as a younger person. And then also to then be a leader, um, just kind of a new level of learning, not, um, I don't know, I think I've learned a lot from leading um, as well, not just attending. So that's been really good. Um, I, I also work at Dunn Brothers in downtown Hudson as a barista, so not too many hours a week, but just a good way to get some life experience and um, yeah, so that's that's been a good thing for me. Um, and then also just kind of as a tidbit of what I'm interested in, um, big picture, I like to interact with people from different cultures and this summer I had the chance to volunteer with a refugee ministry in St. Paul um, called IAFR, so that's International Association for Refugees. And so I did some child care for um, one of their kind of, I don't know, I it's, a, it's just a home where asylum seekers can live while they're um, searching for work or other housing, um, that kind of thing. So that was really cool. Um, as far as post high school plans go, I'm not totally sure where I want to go to college or what I want to study. I'm interested in international relations. Um, and that's kind of in the same line um, of thinking as, well, just the fact that I like other cultures and people and languages and traveling. Um, all my sisters and I are bilingual. We speak French as well as English. So that's a plus for traveling overseas. And um, yeah, just a lot of people in the world speak French. So <laughs> that's helpful. Um, and I am considering actually studying in Switzerland. That's just an idea. It's nothing is set in stone, but um, just what with having dual citizenship and it being a lot cheaper over there, um, it kind of makes sense for several reasons. And also just the opportunity to spend more time with my family, um, our extended family in Switzerland. And post, post college, um, I'm interested in journalism. I didn't want to study journalism. I, I wanted to study something with more content base that I'm interested in and then be able to apply that possibly to a career in journalism. But um, if I study international relations, I'm not locked into journalism per se. Um, so I have a lot of options, but that's just one idea as far as a career goes. So that's a little bit about my high school um, involvement and just ideas for the future. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Zoe. Uh, impressive background. Are there any questions from club members for Zoe? Go ahead, Zach. I've got a couple of questions for, uh, for Zoe. So one, given, given your travel, Zoe, to um, Africa, to the, the Near East and Europe, is there anywhere you think you, you'd like to land uh, when it comes to post, post-secondary school? Uh, and two, a little, a little note, Zoe did forget one family member, uh, an Australian shepherd named Loki that my family had the pleasure to dog sit while she was in Africa. Yeah, she's sitting right here at my feet, I should have mentioned, but yeah. So I guess I don't, I don't have any specific area or region of the world that I'm hoping to live or work or travel in. I'm kind of up for anything, but I actually, I shouldn't say that because I've always been interested in 
in the Middle East. I don't know. I think that's just a really cool, cool place. Um, and I'd like to have the chance to spend some time there in the future, um, working or just traveling. I don't know. Um, it's hard to hard to say what um, how that will pan out. Especially, I mean, right now I can't really plan anything, but a couple years down the line, we'll see. So, yeah. Isaac. So uh, not a question, but I, I just want to promote that you mentioned your interest in uh, living or studying in Switzerland as an option. Of course, you haven't decided where to go because a, a lot of things can change between now and then. Uh, but Rotary has a program called the, uh, the Peace Fellows, and they also have Rotary Fellowships. And I want to talk about the fellowships in that they are, they're made up of Rotarians that have a common field of interest. Uh, and I'm looking at the, the list of fellowships in Switzerland on my other monitor here. And uh, we've got bicyclists, golf, golfers, skiing, yachting, uh, horseback riders, amateur radio, and uh flying Rotarians. I don't know what flying Rotarians are. I, I assume pilots, I, but I'll, uh, I'm not sh exactly sure. Um, but if any of those are of interest to you as an extracurricular, then uh, the Rotary Fellowships and uh, are a good option for further networking when you're in Switzerland or abroad uh, in any country. And just as a reminder, Rotary is an international organization. So if you need connections to wherever your, your life is going to take you, then reach out to a Rotarian and chances are we can put you in the right touch with people. Thank you. That is, that is really good to know. I had no idea that you guys had connections in, in Switzerland or other places. So thank you. I'll definitely keep that on my radar. I wrote it down right here. So. <laughs> Excellent. Good follow-up, Isaac. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, thank you, Zoe. Very impressive. Adrian, would you like to take it from here? Sure, thank you. And again, thank you for inviting me here today. Um, I really appreciate having the chance to listen to everybody and talk to everybody. So a little bit about me. As you know, my name is Adrian Weaver, and I have my parents here, Carrie and Paul Weaver. Um, I have two siblings, two brothers. My older brother, his name is Alex Weaver, and he's currently a freshman at the University of Florida. And my little brother, his name is Ben Weaver. He's currently 14 and in eighth grade at the middle school. So throughout high school, I've done a good number of different things, you know, spread out through my different interests. Um, throughout high school, some of the awards and achievements I've um, earned have been the Hudson High School academic pin throughout the last three years for having a GPA at or above a 4.0. I've been an NHS member since sophomore year, and I'm also a member of the HHS STEM Plus Academy. So it's an academy that allows members to take STEM-oriented and more rigorous classes, and it also has opportunities for students to explore different careers in the field of STEM. Um, in sophomore year, I participated in the Wisconsin State Solon Ensemble, and I earned top ratings in multiple advanced percussion pieces. I would have participated in it last year, but unfortunately it was, it was canceled. Um, and then this spring I was accepted into the United States Air Force Academy Summer Seminar Program, excuse me, Summer Seminar Program. So that was a big, <laughs> that, was a, that was a really cool thing to do. Although it was unfortunately canceled, but it was still cool to be accepted. Um, my extracurriculars throughout high school mainly focus around music, dance, and service. So for music, I've been a member of the band, um, the Hudson High School Band since freshman year. And um, I've been a percussionist since middle school. Sophomore year, I joined the high school marching band and I've been a member of the drum line. And this year I was on, I was, um, on center tenor drums, the big ones. <laughs> and I was drum line captain this year, which was a really cool experience. I'm also a member of the Jazz One Ensemble at the high school, so it's the top auditioned jazz ensemble. Um, for the past three years, I've been a vibraphonist and drummer. Um, 
And then outside of music, um, I am also a member of the Hudson High School Writing Center. So they picked, you know, a group of around 30 students from the whole high school my freshman year to be founding members of this writing center. So this was a really cool experience to help develop this throughout the past few years. So I'm also a writing coach this year for the writing center. And then getting into dance, I used to dance at a competitive company, but since high school, I've joined the Phipps Center for the Arts. You know, they also do plays there, but I've been participating in the dance program since sophomore year. Um, so I participate in dance classes, including point and tap and hip hop and some other different classes there. And I'm also a member of the audition Phipps Dance Company. Um, so I've been a member since sophomore year and this year I am captain of the, one of the captains of the Phipps Dance Company. So in terms of service, I also participate in a lot of community service. One of these is through St. Patrick Parish right across from the high school. Um, there I'm a volunteer sacristan, so I run mass behind the scenes with my mom. Um, I'm also an altar server, a minister of communion, a mission trip volunteer, and a camp and retreat counselor, leader, and speaker for people all the way from kindergarten to mid-high school. And my other, big, uh, my other big service activity has been through the Hudson Backpack Program. I frequently volunteer there. And outside of these things in my free time, I really like to do, um, I really like to compete in local triathlons and do free weights. And I also like to downhill ski and scuba dive. So, and then in addition to these kind of fitness aspects of my life, this year for my senior capstone project for the high school, I'm creating a fitness club that's focused on introducing students to fitness who maybe don't know where to start. So I was in the same places in the years back and I figured, you know, everybody needs a helping hand getting started because it can be really intimidating trying to learn how to be fit and trying to learn how to, you know, have proper form and etiquette and have a good schedule. Um, in terms of work, um, for the past few years, I have worked at a small, small local bakery called Bitmad Bakery, where I bake bread. <laughs> and this year I was nominated as Employee of the Year 2020, which is very cool. Um, I also work at the Phipps Center for the Arts as a dan dance instructor for young students, um, you know, in, in elementary school. And I have been a tutor to others. I do that both, I have done that both paid and volunteer this year. So for my post high school plans, um, I have a pretty good idea of my top range of colleges I want to go to. My um, first choice college is the United States Air Force Academy, and I'm, I have finished with my application, and I currently have two congressional nominations, which is very cool. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Ladd. And um, so I'm very close, you know, to finding out if I am an appointee or not. So that is something I'm waiting for and I'm very excited about. Um, and outside of that, I have a few other colleges that I've also applied to in my second year including MIT and Rice, Loyola Chicago, and UW-Madison. And if I don't end up going to the Air Force Academy, I plan on doing Air Force ROTC for, for my education so I can go into the Air Force after college. <laughs> so my preferred, you know, I want to go into the field of STEM and my four kind of top majors or areas of interest include chemistry, physics, astrophysics, or aerospace engineering and material science, so kind of in the STEM field. And on that you know, topic, I don't know exactly what career I want, but I feel discovering my major and what I want to do throughout college will help me find my way there. So, and then I just have a few, I know you mentioned adding something about influences and I've had a few really huge influences throughout my life. So my parents have been one of my largest influences for as long as I can remember. They've um, have encouraged me to treat all questions as a chance to learn. And they both have science backgrounds and they were the ones who first introduced me to the world of STEM and um, different, you know, my different kinds of interests and extra, extracurriculars that I have. And then in middle school, two teachers really stood out to me, including Mr. De Leon, the, te uh, the space tech and robotics teacher, excuse me, and Ms. Bray, the tech ed teacher. And they also introduced, you know, they got me more involved in STEM. Mr. De Leon even prompted me to compete in the East Cyber Mission, which is this national military funded competition 
uh, where you want where you're trying to solve a problem in your community. So I organized a team with three other girls and we ended up placing first in state and second in regionals with a project focused on water filtration using eggshells, which is pretty cool. And then throughout high school, my largest influence has been my AP physics and AP chemistry teacher, Miss McLaughlin. She really introduced me to physics and chemistry and how they can relate. And she helped me develop my skills in these areas. She also, in, you know, she also inspired me to pursue a chemistry and physics kind of route in college. So that's one of my perspective areas of study that I would like to go into. So I think that's that's a good amount about me. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Adrian. Very, very impressive. Are there any questions, Randy? For, for one, what free time? My goodness. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So you say the Air Force, what, what are you going to do in the Air Force or what do you want to pilot or what? It's kind of you've got all this other experience, but then you want to go to the Air Force. Yeah, so there's I'm I don't plan on becoming a pilot per se, but I'm leaving that path open just in case, you know, that's something that I end up wanting to do. I'm leaving it open, but there are a lot of jobs in the Air Force where you don't I can, you know, exercise my other skills and other interests. So I could be a chemist, I could be developing rockets, I could be, you know, doing a bunch of, yeah, I could even join the Space Force, which is this new, you know, the new branch kind of connected to the Air Force. And I, that's always fascinated me, you know, discovery and above, so. Well, good luck. We'd be fortunate as a country to have you in the Air Force, that's for sure. Thank you. Isaac. So Adrian, I have uh, a comment and then a question. Uh, my first major in college was astrophysics. So I would not be at all uh, disappointed if you headed down <laughs> that career path. Uh, but my question is this, you know, to adding on to Randy's question about, you know, where do you, you know, when do you sleep, you know, your free time. Uh, for those of us who don't do squat about fitness, and don't know where to start, is there space in your student-oriented group for adults? <laughs> <laughs> well, as part of our capstone project, uh, my friend and I were working on it together. His name is Cameron Waldahl. We were thinking of creating some sort of outreach sort of app or website that could kind of, if, you know, I don't think it would be <laughs> you'd be able to come to the high school, but um, as a part of it, we might have some sort of outreach, like a website that can help with that. So that that might be a way that you would be able to connect. Maybe a monthly visit for Isaac and me at the Rotary meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave like, I'll just come in, we'll do like a, bring your weights. <laughs> Not pretty. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Zoe and Adrian, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have had you here. It's abundantly clear you both are gonna be wildly successful whatever you choose to do, and uh, we're honored to have had you present here today. I will be mailing out uh, certificates uh, to each of you, uh, commemorating your time with us here today at Rotary. Uh, it's going to be signed by uh, Randy Morissette, our club president, and me as uh, the vice chair for um, student outreach, along with a copy of our uh, Rotary four-way test. It's the motto that you heard us recite at the beginning of the meeting. And finally, you'll be getting uh, a Rotary pin to hopefully remind you of your experience uh, here today at Rotary. And parents, if you are at all interested in, in getting involved in Rotary and learning more about the organization, uh, we'd be happy to, to direct you to our website. Isaac kind of told you about some of the international connections we have and locally what we're doing uh, to help serve the community and those who are having trouble with food uh, this holiday season. So again, ladies, thank you very much. Uh, very impressive. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you as well. It was very, it was very nice to talk to you all. Thank you very much, both of you and your parents for wonderful jobs. So we all clap virtually. <laughs> so you're more than welcome to stay in on the meeting or you can certainly zoom off or click off, I guess. I think my dad and I are gonna gonna go on our way to get back to class and lunch so yeah thank you though have a good rest of your day all of you you're very welcome congratulations yeah i believe i will also be heading out because i have to have some lunch and get to my next classes so again 
thank you. Really appreciate you. Re we really appreciate being on here and have a good day as well. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. With that, do we have any other business before Rotary? I should go back to high school and try again. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it make it? Yeah, we're depressing. Oh, now wow. that I now that I feel uh -huh. completely unaccomplished with my life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy boy! Yeah. Any other business for Rotary today? Any announcements? Anything? If not, short and sweet today. So I appreciate you all. There is the evening meeting next week. And then after that, uh, we won't see you until the new year, if that's correct. That is correct, Randy. Can you update, uh, for those of us who don't remember, what time is the meeting next week? Five. Five o'clock, OK. 5 PM. It is on your newsletter. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Thanks for pointing, throwing me under the bus there and making me read the newsletter. <laughs> That's why we got them. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Holiday season if we don't see you in or after the holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have Merry a good Christmas. day, everybody.